Hello there, folks. Uh, welcome to our video lecture here. We got uh, your basic 1932 Olympics and how it was shaped up due to the Great Depression. You know, uh, this is by Phelan Kingsbury and uh, Andrew Janicek. So uh, let's begin. Throughout all of our research, the question arose, how did the United States pull off the 1932 Olympic Summer Games in the height of the Great Depression. Huh. The following thesis statement is, although the Great Depression forced financial and traveling challenges, the United States managed to pull off a very memorable Olympic Games. The 1932 Olympics was held in Los Angeles, California. The Games took place in the newly renovated Memorial Coliseum. As you can see with the picture provided right about here, you can see that there were a lot of people there and the energy was definitely there as well. The Coliseum could fit approximately 105,000 people. <laughs> the 1932 Olympic Games was a particularly unique Olympic Games because it took place in the heart of the Great Depression. It took a long, long, long time to develop and organize the Olympic Games because a lot of people, including presidents and leaders of other countries, didn't believe the Olympic Games would happen. As you can see here, times were very tough for many people. Why can this kid's dad not get a job? It took a long time to develop and organize these Olympic Games because a lot of people, including presidents and leaders of other countries, didn't believe the Games would happen. Invitation letters were sent out for months without responding from big countries like France, France, and Germany. Yeah. Through a series of United States campaigns and continuous invitation letters, Enough countries came together to allow the games to become reality. And yes, Germany and France did partake. Due to the Great Depression, Los Angeles was the only place that agreed to host the Olympics. Because of that, two huge problems had to be overcome for the athletes. One was traveling to Los Angeles, and two was gathering funds to make that happen. As soon as the athletes were in the United States, they would take multiple railroad connections to get to L.A. Many charities and donations were set up worldwide to allow these athletes to go. Just to give you a time range, from Los Angeles to Newark or New Jersey took about 19 hours and 15 minutes on rail. Although there were as many athletes as the 1908 Olympics and approximately half as many as the previous 1928 Olympics, yup, that's right, you heard it here, half as many as the previous 1928 Olympics, the competition still remained extremely high. I repeat, half as many as the 1928 Olympics. There were, t there were athletes ranging from all age groups. Two standouts were Ralph Flanagan and George Giles. George, right over here, was 54 years old and honestly didn't know when to stop. While Ralph, right over Shmish, was 13 years old and believed in getting a head start. The fans were a whole new problem. It was assumed that if the athletes were having a tough time getting there, that the fans would stay at home. This proved to be a completely wrong assumption when the Coliseum was nearly sold out during the opening ceremonies. One negative part of this experience was that President Herbert Hoover, yup, Herbert Hoover, the president, was not able to attend the games. There were 14 events in this Olympic Games. You got diving, swimming, water polo, boxing, equestrian, Hey, what's that? You know, I have no clue. Cycling, fencing, gymnastics, field hockey, wrestling, rowing, modern pentathlon, Andy's favorite, shooting, Phelan's favorite, weightlifting. 
Those were the uh, 14 events. With all these sports, there were 20 disciplines and 117 total events. There were also two demonstration sports that were American football and lacrosse. Demonstration sports were used and introduced in the Olympics to spread that particular sport. Lacrosse and American football were not as popular as they are today during this time period. Lucky for everyone in the audience, we figured it'd be nice to give you guys a fun fact from the Fun Fact Factory. Turns out, in 1932, the U.S. also held the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid, New York. Sweet, huh?